Good afternoon, Dr. Galia. Tell us about the current situation in China. The current situation is, if I may use the word, hopeful. China has gone through a trial. At times, at the height of the epidemic, we were seeing 3,800 new cases every day. That, since the early February, has been in rapid decline. And now, uh, no local cases are being reported and all cases are imported from uh, other countries. There is vigilance in China um, to be attentive uh, and to screen and quarantine all the arrivals from other countries. At the same time, there is the pride of the achievement. A lot has been uh, gained by understanding the virus, developing clinical management guidelines, and uh, the country has gone through uh, a major test uh, where uh, for two months on end, uh, in people in Wuhan uh, were staying at home. There are still important movement restrictions, and there has been no let up in the personal behavioral advice to observe hand hygiene, respiratory etiquette as our two main behavioral uh, interventions, as well as to maintain social distancing. As we speak, we are returning to work and there is uh, an increase in uh, presence at offices and workplaces all around the country. The next phase of response for China? I think of this phase as being the third phase. Uh, the first part was the recognition of the epidemic, the identification of the virus, the design of the test, the development of the clinical management guidelines. Then came the lockdown in Wuhan, and that signaled a second phase in which very strong public health measures that had been uh, were used very aggressively in China but had not been seen in public health for at least a century. They were imposed across the whole country and uh, with different measures, with, with different levels of intensity. These have effectively controlled the uh, epidemic and changed the trajectory. Now we are at the phase, uh, the third phase of vigilance against the possible resurgence and with the restart of uh, activities of life, uh, slow and gradual opening of schools, slow and gradual opening of workplaces, um, careful use of uh, public transport, at the same time being vigilant to the possible interpret uh, in importation and resurgence. So it is a, a cautious time uh, when uh, the measures for behavioral control of the epidemic are no less uh, important, no less stringent, but the vast public health measures are largely relaxing. What can other countries learn from China's COVID-19 response? China has shown that it is possible to contain the outbreak and to also to be prepared in case of resurgence to so-called flatten the curve, that is to draw out uh, through public health measures the uh, uh, amount of new cases that are seen and faced by the health system. This was the pattern seen outside Hubei, the epicenter, and to raise the capacity of the health system to be able to control any surge in the number of cases. This happens within a sandwich of a whole of government and the whole of society approach. So China has documented these approaches and has successfully controlled a peak of the epidemic, using them again uh, as a preventive uh, in case of a possible resurgence in the future. While the virus exists around the world, no country can deem itself to be safe from such an epidemic. The second lesson is that one has to be agile in the use of evidence. New science is developing on a weekly basis, a deeper understanding uh, of the virus, its transmission dynamics, its severity, 
and the way to treat it clinically. And therefore, every country must be uh, ready to ad adjust its guidelines um, to the evidence as it arises and to the knowledge in, in science as it accumulates. A third uh, lesson is the uh, importance of not thinking of one approach. China did not have one approach, but it had multiple approaches that were based on a careful risk assessment as to how many cases there were, how many clusters there were, whether there was community transmission on uh, testing across the population, active case finding, contact tracing. These measures were all combined with the personal uh, behavioral approach of uh, social distancing, hand hygiene, respiratory etiquette. Different levels of mix of the public health and personal interventions used on a highly science-based approach. These, if any, are the lessons that one would like to see replicated in other countries around the world. How is WHO supporting the government of China? WHO works with the government of China as we do with so many other member states. We provide technical advice and in the story of the virus uh, we have been uh, working together on understanding the severity, the transmission dynamics and the impacts of control measures. WHO has served as a two-way conduit, uh, bringing in and taking out information and questions, exchanging the results of research between Chinese experts and experts in other countries. We also have reached out to the population at large in China, have had campaigns from WHO reaching tens of millions of people in China, uh, talking about the personal behaviors that they can use in order to protect themselves and their loved ones. We have had one campaign across the UN country team that has even reached a record number of 1 billion views. Through these mechanisms of international exchange, national support and outreach to the population, we have been part of the process of cooperation and of mitigation of the impact of COVID-19 on the Chinese population. What are some of the health challenges WHO anticipates longer term once China enters a recovery phase? Now that the uh, epidemic is behind us, at least uh, for the first phase, um, we need to be looking at more long-term issues as well as the direct impacts of the virus on the Chinese population. Because of the long period of stasis, staying in at home, quarantine, uh, people have uh, mental health issues, anxiety, concern, uh, anger, depression, they are uh, natural uh, reactions to the massive changes that are happening in society, not only in China, but all across the world. Mental health becomes uh, an important issue to be looking at. But beyond that, there are also issues where because of the high demand on the emergency services, many people have had to miss out or to space out more routine services, such as uh, treatment for heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, uh, such as treatment for other chronic diseases, the tuberculosis, um, hepatitis. Also, uh, the care for routine preventive services like antenatal care and immunization. So all of these need to ramp up um, and to catch up with any gaps that may have accumulated uh, during the period of staying at home. Finally, the health system itself uh, will be looking at its own reform. When we started uh, th this uh, story, um, we had just ended 10 years of health sector reform in China, and China was looking at the next decade towards achieving the targets for Healthy China 2030. All of those targets uh, become extremely important including uh, and linked to the targets to eliminate e extreme poverty in the country. The social determinants of health become ever more important when faced with a challenge 
such as the one uh, we have just seen in the last two months.